We know our rights, but we respect the officers that are here to protect and serve us. And so we will, we have mutually agreed that we will respect each other, that our interactions will be positive, and that we will, we will hold each other accountable, the community and the officers. So as being a staff, one of our help attorney. Thank you, and um, this is a great forum, so I'm happy to be here tonight. But getting back to the accountability question, I'm the elected Commonwealth's attorney here in Arlington. Every four years, I stand for election. I've been on the front lines of the criminal justice system for 30 years. And let me say that as a former board member of OAR, Elizabeth group does great work, and we work every day in the courts. Um, and I will say that um, certainly the last thing as prosecutors that we want to do is send a person to jail or to prison. Um, we, we, and one of the reasons that, that drew, uh, drew me here tonight was the term mass incarceration. And it's all the great work that you are doing. I want to push back a little bit and say that mass incarceration to, to me and to criminal justice um, professionals, I, I think is a term that is used to delegitimize what we do. Because there's not a prosecutor in this country that engages in mass incarceration. Every individual that we prosecute is an individual, is a person with a name, a date of birth, an offense that they're accused of. And we are, we are caused to bring evidence to bear against that individual every single time we go to court. We don't round up people in a mass way and send them off in boxcars to a gulag or a prison. We don't do that. And one of the reasons I wanted to speak tonight was to make sure you folks know as members of this community that we don't engage with that in Arlington, but we do hold people accountable because we have to do that. We have laws on the books that we need to enforce. And I will say that my office is statewide is probably the, one of the offices that certifies fewer uh, criminal defendants for the juvenile court. And Valerie, you can probably back me up on those statistics. Um, but when a 17-year-old in South Arlington who's been through the criminal justice system in Arlington from when he was in middle school and got into high school and began, you know, committing crimes and got into high school to commit crimes and brutally murdered his father on April 1st of 2015 at 17, we moved to certify him as an adult because the criminal justice system could do no more for that individual. And he pled guilty to first degree murder and will be sentenced in September of this year. But that was an individual who we prosecuted and that's what prosecutors do do. And getting back to the question about what folks can do about real meaningful criminal justice reform, Talk to your legislators about raising the threshold between petty larceny and grand larceny. In, in Virginia, it's two hundred dollars. <laughs> and you know, as I say in many of these places I go to, you know, we have a lot of our young people who go to Pentagon City Mall and they commit a, a felony and they commit a theft. Uh, you know, and it's going to almost always be a felony. And I say you can't go to Nordstrom and commit a misdemeanor because you're going to be stealing something over two hundred dollars. So you want to see meaningful criminal justice reform? Talk to your members of your House of Delegates and your state senators to pass that law that raises the threshold. My office, my association, the Virginia Association of Criminal Attorneys have been working on that for many, many years. Um, we recently have agreed to waive all jail time for all first-time drug offenders, and, uh, excuse me, possession of marijuana offenders in Arlington. No one goes to, to jail in Arlington County for possession of marijuana, first offense, second offense third offense. I mean, you have to work really hard to be incarcerated for possession of marijuana. And I think uh, Elizabeth will, will support us on that. And we regularly use OAR as an alternative to incarceration. But I will also say that there are individuals in the system who, through you know, a, a, an intense amount of work in our juvenile courts, in our adult courts, with operations like OAR, and our drug court that I, along with um, Judge DiMatteo and the, uh, the courts have uh, moved into Arlington now as another alternative to incarceration, there are individuals who simply will not abide by our laws. And, we, and when you talk about who is incarcerated in, in Virginia for, for multiple years of incarceration, it's going to be violent offenders. There are not going to be possession of marijuana, possession of cocaine, possession of LSD in our pen, penitentiaries in Virginia. And I think you will look at the statistics and you'll see that. So um, I just want an opportunity to kind of push back a little bit on some of these and to, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm not trying to hijack the, uh, the forum here, but um, I think it's important for us to have a, an honest conversation about the role of criminal justice and what we're trying to do as a community to keep people safe and to hold individuals accountable. And I applaud you all for, especially Valerie, for coming up 
from, uh, from Richmond and, and being here tonight. And I also have with me my Director of Victim Services, uh, Autumn Jones, and, and Cassandra Blaisbrot, who's also a Victim Services uh, Specialist. So we invite you to come to the courthouse on any Friday to see all the work that we do, how hard we have to work to get people to do their community service, and to complete their court costs and to hold folks accountable. But the system does work. And as a person who's been, as I say, on the front lines for 30 years, I have to push back on the idea that it's a broken criminal justice system. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know there was a question in the back. Um, so thank you so much to the moderator.